Welcome to the Dr. Ine Adesnia podcast. Our various U.S. and international accounting and tax designations, a master's in tax, and a PhD in business administration with a concentration in finance and accounting. Over the past two decades, I have helped several SMEs succeed. This podcast will provide strategies and resources to help startups and existing businesses thrive. Let's get started. So at this time, we're just going to talk about how to keep your business credit cards. Remember, the last podcast I, I believe I spoke about earlier on was that you should keep documents, right? So now I'm going to speak about how to keep these documents. I mean, like, what do you do? How do you even file the documents? Yes, we talked about assets, liability, documents, expenses, income, but how do you keep these documents? Okay, now some people choose to keep it by month, right? Oh, these are the expenses I had in January 2021, you know, or 2020. These are the, this is the income I had in January. You know, they keep it, you know, in folders, right? Based on the month, right? Some people decide that, okay, well, they're not going to do it based on the month. They do it based on categories. What does that mean? You might say, okay, these are all my gas bills, right? And they just say January to they put it in a in a in a file. All my from January to December, everything I spent on gas, right? From January to December, and um, you know that's categorizing it, right? Some people might say, as I said, all my expenses in January, put it in one folder, right? And then some people might do a combination of both, right? Putting it January um, utilities, right? February utilities, right? March utilities, and then another folder would say um, January um, revenue, February revenue, right? Depending on, you know, of course, month and year. And so it should be, you know, you could, a combination of, of different ways to do that. Now, the most important thing in, doc, in file or keeping documents is what? Accessibility. How do you ask? I mean, being able to assess your documents, right? You know, I mean, if you're not able to assess it, then, I mean, the essence of filing and keeping them in order, I mean, the essence has been defeated. So you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you are actually keeping documents, filing documents, you know, in a way that you can actually really have access to these documents very easily. All right. So now, now the question now is, do I do paper filing, electronic? What is it? How do I go about it? And um, I would say it depends. Now, depending on which country you're in, you know, so many countries now accept electronic filing as proof of evidence, right? But please be very careful because it depends on which country you're in, right? There are some countries that's, that actually still require paper documentation, you know, showing this paper documentation. Now, if your country, your, your country that you're resident in says it's fine, electronic filing is fine, I would say go with electronic filing. I mean, I'm so much in love with electronic filing that, I mean, I, I mean, a lot, anything electronic because I mean, I like being anywhere in the world and being able to access anything I like. I mean, any when I say anything I like, I'm talking about documents, being able to have access to all my documents as and when needed. So I'm very, I'm always, I'm like very, very happy, very excited when I can do that. You know, I don't have to deal with, oh, logging in, you know, because there are actually softwares now that you can do and it's like an interface software to just, you know, um, log into it, you know, log in you know, um, you know, um, may, even though you're online, but you're actually on their server, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I'm not a technology person. I just love to use it. So, yeah. So I would say, but I mean, it still depends on the country you're in, right? It depends, you know, so make sure you know, if the government that you're, you, where you're, you know, you're, the government accepts that because you don't want to go and say, okay, you want to be your an electronic filer, right? And at the end of the day, um, you're not allowed to use, you know, um, 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 electronic documents as evidence or backup or support. Backup, we say, but it means support for anything you're doing, right? So I would say, please 
you know, um, check the country you're in. I know that even with documents, you has to, you know, we'll talk about that, uh, about how long you can, you should keep your documents. But, but again, I'm so much, um, you know, really, really, um, I'm happy, or should I say, um, I really like being able to, as I said, remember when I talked about small and medium sized companies, I said, please make sure you're not spending cash, spend you know, make sure you're spending, um, you know, um, through checks, debit card, you know, in a form of, so you can do a paper trail. And so that's why we can access our documents. Now, if, you know, um, you know, if you, so look at this scenario, assume you didn't know that electronic filing is not, is not really acceptable. And you, you sort of electronic filing, yeah, then you sort of, you know, shredded everything and did electronic filing. And you find out, oh no, no, this is you need to have paper documentation, and you you really you know make sure you pass everything through the banks through you know paper trail, proper paper trail. You can just go back to that bank and ask. You know you might have to pay a fee, but at least those documents exist, right? And you can retrieve retrieve those documents. That's isn't that fantastic? So please make sure you know which you know how what what the government authorities allow i think the, I, the irs i think is very good really with paper um with um um with um you know electronic i, I, I know they accept that here um here in the us you know but again you know depends on where you are and um, please make sure you're really 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 checking that too you know but i would say that accessibility is it for me i mean I mean, you could also have paper filing, but but I would say that if you're really, really, if you're allowed to do electronic filing, to me, that's the way, best way to go because it's so easy for you to open a file. I mean, even the folder source the file, source it out by date of modification. You know, it sorts it out and make sure that um that you have, you know, you can say, okay, this is January, this is February. You know, some of us that have clients, we we put everything that that usually put like things like any document, right? That pertains to that client in that client's folder, right? And then of course, anything that pertains to the entity that like the firm, my firm, I put it under one folder, right? Just make sure that that is what happens, right? So for me, it's so easy to assess information when I want it. That's why I would say that electronic filing is the way to go. And so of course, you know, um, the issue would be, okay, you're saying electronic filing. Um, what about security? How do I deal with security? What do I, you know, how do I go about things? Well, that 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 answer would be in our third segment, right? A security specialist is going to talk about what is it, how do you actually file, what is required, what do you do? Um, how do you go about it as a small business? Because I know SMEs have limited resources, right? And our goal here is to make it so efficient in that you don't have to spend so much to make sure that you're, you know, that you're thriving in your business, making sure your business is successful. We don't want to, you know, cut corners. And at the end of the day, you are, because of not, not having enough resources, you're cutting corners. And then at the end of the day, it comes to burn you, right? Making sure that it doesn't come back to you in a negative way. So you don't want that to happen. You want to make sure that you're actually doing things and putting things in place in the right way. All right. So that, of course, I know that there are ways you can do that and there are cheaper ways you can do that in a very efficient way. All right. Okay. So um, again, just to recap, how do you keep your records, business records? You know, you can file it by the, you know, by the, um, the expense itself by the revenue itself or you know by you know and then you know file it by the when i say expense itself is everything utility sorry so expense itself every utility right is put in place right and so as i said just to recap um making sure that and so remember to recap now we have a guest here you know, he's my husband, so wanted to uh, tell everybody that. But he is a security specialist. He is a computer security specialist, and he's going to help us out with. Remember, I talked about the privacy and things like that about, and then he's going to give us some um, snippets 
for for people that um you know small businesses that have limited resources so as i said recapping up how to store um um your own how to store your records um remember are you doing it electronically and um or paper filing right so let me let me first of all go to not to the second segment before we give him the ability to speak i'll ask him the questions in the um third segment of this um podcast Okay, let's see. I think somebody actually asked a question that was close to, I think somebody sent a question. Let's see. Hello, Dr. Inibe. My name is Annie Umo. I have many business documents. Is it best to store the documents electronically or by paper filing? Let me know. Thank you. I actually think I answered that question already. Um, she was asking what is the best way to store um, documents? Is it electronically or by um, by, by paper paper filing? And I, I think, I mean, if you listen from the beginning, I, I, I actually answered that question, right? So right now we're, we're really talk, focusing on the security. Remember, everybody's going to, you know, looking at electronic filing, a lot of, a lot of um, um, small businesses are using that. You know, for me, it's, it's convenience. So um, I brought, my, um, you know, my husband, David, here to David Adesanya to speak to us. As I said, he's his computer. He's a, he has his CISSP designations and, you know, a couple of designations in IT. And we wanted to just, I'm asking him that, please um, share with us because many, many small businesses, right, um, have limited resources. I always like talking, telling <laughs> um, um, our speakers that they have limited resources. And um, I really want you to help us to tell us, like, what is it that, what can we do? What can, what can we do to make sure that the data that's, that is stored, what can small businesses do, SMEs do, to make sure that the data that is stored, that is actually make sure that it's protected? You know, what can they do? Thank you for giving me the opportunity uh, to comment to, uh, to this area of security. Uh, on especially cyber security. Um, I think uh, you already, from all, some of the questions you have, you have answered, you answer it appropriately. It is better to go uh, in the cloud these days than uh, to keep paper around. We know that you know when you use paper uh, filing or you keep documents in paper form, it can fall into the wrong hands. And many other people, you know, it's, there is a propensity for people to steal it. They are just, it just, you know, it can, people that are not supposed to see it can see the documents and it can be copied. They can, yeah. There's, there's a, just a lot of, yeah. um, a lot, a lot of ways in which we know, and of course, you know, it can get lost and and, and the the most scary thing is getting it in the wrong hand. Yes. There are many solutions these days that is targeted towards small business and they are very cost effective they are, the competition is really uh, keen out there they are, and that competition has helped in bringing down the cost okay. of keeping your document uh, in the cloud yeah. so awesome. to me i would say there is no substitute to it is the way to go it is where everyone is going to keep things in the cloud is the way to go now you may be asking me, but what of the security? Yes, because yes. people are so worried about, yes. oh, you know, people are getting my information yes. online. Yes. I want people to understand this, that all the people, all the players who are providing cloud services these days too, they are being monitored by government. There oh, are many wow. policies, there are many wow. uh, compendium wow. that is out there oh, that wow. government, uh, government standards they have to meet. Oh, For wow. you to be in that uh, business, there are many standards that has been set and they have to meet all these standards. Oh, wow. when you, if you don't meet those standards, you cannot even do that business. Oh, wow. A lot of time, the, way, the reason, a lot of time, it is actually more of people who has the data? Perhaps at times they don't know what they are doing, or they, you know, like for an example, um, 
you get into a cloud services, they give you a password. Uh, most of them these days make sure that you use strong password. People at times, they give you password, you write it down, you use combination of your birthday, your children's birthday, common words, little, little things like that. We just need to be careful to know about it. And I know a lot of cloud services actually will give you information about how to choose uh, if it is password. Not only that, people, they, most cloud services are moving away from password. Most cloud services are moving, uh, moving into what we call multi-factor authentication. So for you to authenticate, you have to have uh, two forms of ID. It's not only a password. They, they may give you, they may send a code to you that it's only you that know that code. People use biometric information to authenticate oh, wow. you into their services oh, wow. these days. So you need... <clears throat> Wow, that's think? also very, that's so, I'm just, I think we are all glad everybody listening. This is so awesome because, you know, I mean, I think what really, what is really saying that really, really, really impresses me is because they said government regulates this. I never, I never, I never knew that government even regulates it. I thought that, you know, you're putting things there because sometimes we even see big companies having breaches. So I, I'm just concerned, but you're even saying that there, there are even, you know, li different levels and that, you know, that if they breach it, if they, you know, it, if um, the government can come after them. But that actually leads to my next question, because um, if, if these big companies can send us emails that, oh, there's been a breach, a breach, you know, um, how does that happen? How does that, it does, it's, it just, um, you know, one, I mean, just trying to clarify that. Well, what, what happened is a lot of time, you will be surprised how many companies, uh, how many companies that are, that has not, met the standards set up by uh, by government or by the information uh, body, information security body that gives standards and that created all these policies. There are so many, many companies are still far behind. And that is why you hear some bridges here and there. Many companies have not met that standard. You see that I've seen situation these days in which some company will not even do business with you if you don't meet some uh, international standard organization, uh, organization yeah. standard, ISO standard, they will tell you, go and show us the standard. And if you have, if you make just that without that standard, they will even do business with you. But Especially when it involves uh, real, uh, personal, people, personal data. information, data. personal yeah. data. Privacy, then yeah. one of the things you can ask the cloud services, if you want to get into any cloud services, there are many of them, I'm not said, I'm not going to mention names because uh, you know I'm not representing them, but there are many of them that you can find out there. You can actually ask them. Uh, are you certified on that? Yes. Yeah, are you certified on that ISO organization? Do you meet ISO standard? Can you show me? Because they are they are actually expected to show you some of those policies that they have put in place to and some of the stand, uh, implementation they have put in place to meet the policy set. Uh, set, uh, standard set, you can ask for it. It is your right as a consumer that want to buy their services. So before you buy services, ask. Wow. Ask if they are thank you. Thank you. Services. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't even, <laughs> I actually yeah, didn't know you could ask. Right. But the, my own question has to do with if, okay, so what happens with these big organizations, these big companies that are, that they email us, oh, it seems that your data has been breached. How does that happen? Don't they ask? <laughs> Don't they ask, you know, I mean, you know, because I'm really concerned about that. If, if, um, don't they go, or is it breach internally or how does, is it internal breaching? So some of majority, and if you go, they, I don't have the, uh, the, the numbers uh, with me right away, but majority of them, majority of them are trying to implement the cloud services that, that, different type of cloud services, right? Yes. People can have private cloud and yes. you can have, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Public cloud. A lot of these companies are trying to go the private cloud way. They have this data in their, in their, in their network and they manage it. They set it up by themselves. They didn't, they, they didn't, uh, they are not doing, they are not working Fast Alongside. enough to meet the it. standard because the standard it. keeps changing all it. the time. So this is these are part yes. of the problem. And uh, the numbers most when you go out and check it, most yes. of them has to do with 
Pri going private, private cloud. I got it. Okay. I'm trying in the private cloud, people get into their network. Their okay. network is not it. set up properly. Okay. And they get yeah. into it. I get it now. I get because I was just concerned and I was just wondering how come that, you know, so that means that they might, because it's an internal thing, they don't really regulate yeah. them as much as going to this big cloud so company. When you I go to the public cloud, it's well regulated. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's well regulated. Wow. In fact, wow. when you hear most uh, data bridges, it has nothing to do with public clouds. Most wow. of them are private cloud oh, wow. uh, that people or private wow. network of companies wow. that people break into and they get into people's data. But wow. when it comes to the public cloud, most of most of the players how they are well secured and uh, wow. they, yes, they are well secured. And uh, you should Honestly. not be people should not be afraid to use them. They, they 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 have to meet standards and though most of them without meeting that standard they will not even be in the business oh my goodness so i'm so i'm this is such a this is such a i mean great information and what really is even really 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 um moves me so much is because i mean of course because it's my husband kudos that one number one but also you know what he said he said you can actually ask them before you even even say that you're going to use their services, pick up, tell them, okay, are you licensed? Are you have you met what do you say ISO standard, right? ISO, what do you call uh, yes. it? Uh, international standard organization standard. There okay. are many standards. That is the NIST uh, national. Okay, so we just say ISO. That's all. ISO. Okay, remember, guys, it's ISO, ISO. NIST standards. And okay, give us one. It. I know you. I know. I <laughs> give. I know your level, but please give us one. That's no, I'm just saying that for just to make it easy on people, they can Google ISO standard. They can okay. Google. NIST standard. So okay. those are the those are the standard information standards that are very important. Yeah, okay. those are those two. Okay, you know, those two should be enough. By the time you check on those two, yeah, and they have them. Ask intelligent question and say, do you have those standards? Oh, wow. standard? And if they meet those standards in form of uh, in form of uh, how they protect your info the yes. confidentiality of your information that is a so what we call CIA triad in cybersecurity that okay. has to do with confidentiality, okay. integrity and availability of your data. Okay. That you need so they all have to meet when we talk about confidentiality, we are talking about you know encrypting your data so people cannot get into it. They have to meet all these things. and of course integrity is when it is disclosed to who data should not be disclosed to. There are standards set up for those under this compendium, and uh, and they have to meet it. Public cloud services have to meet okay. all these things. The policy are there. The government has set up the policy, and they have to meet the policy. And you can request for you for from them to give you the information of the standard they meet because you can hold hold that against them in case. I don't expect it. It's almost impossible to happen. But if it happened, at least you have something to show that. But you said you made the policy, you made the standard. Yeah. This is the document you gave to me. And you can use that, of course, to fight against them. All right. See, this is, although this is high tech, you know, he's a high tech one. So please, <laughs> he's high tech. So when he gets to that level, we just, we tell him, thank you so much. But really just remember, I just got, the, what I got there is that for, I'm, I hope everybody, I guess mo some people are more technical than me, but you know, for me, the ISO is what I got. And also, I mean, and what I really got also is ask, ask them. So and before I you, yeah, go ahead. NIST and ISO standards. Okay, NIST. So those two, NIST and ISO. So that's what, I mean, for my level of technology education, right? So he's up there. So um, so please, guys, whenever you want to talk to, to, to go into the cloud to use, which is awesome because cloud is it right now. You saw, you've heard what the, the expert said about how you keep papers. You know, people can keep papers, people can take still documents, people can open somebody's file and make copies, but cloud is secured. He said, that's what he, this is the expert. Yes, he's my husband also, but he's the expert also in that field and not but, but and. And so please, and is NIST, is that what you said? Yes. NIST and ISO. And, and ISO standard yes. as the ISO. Yes. If they have uh, some yes. documentation to confirm yes. that they are and so 
you can request yes. for it. And uh, if you talk to the right person, when you call before you sign up for anything, they will educate you, they will tell you, they will assure you, and they will yes. tell you all the things they have in place to meet those standards. Awesome. So that's all you need. So before you start, people, you know, let me tell you, for small businesses and medium-sized businesses, we get so many people coming to us, sending emails to us, sending documents to us, sending and advertising and giving, you know, advertising to us and, you know, all those stuff, right? Advertising all kinds of things. Please, 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 as he said, call them and say, I love what your advert, but you have ISO, you have NISC. Let, all right. Me, so thank I, you. Please, please, before you finish, this is very important. People need to stop sending personal information through public email, like Gmail, Hotmail. You know, when you, for an example... You mean personal you information, personal. personal yes, through, any through personal public. information, any personal information that you have, stop sending it through general email. You know, you you send email about you, your birth certificate or your birth but uh, uh, your birth certificate, your uh, uh, your bank account, all those things. Public, wow. all the public uh, email are not safe. There are some I, other I solutions actually... you can use to upload documents to people. Stop sending things through. And you know, email. and you know, a lot of yeah. Just to add to what he says, a lot of small businesses guess what they what email they use. They use yeah. they put their company name and put and say at Gmail, please. Set up and set up um, 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 a URL for your business. I mean, that's. I mean, I'm not saying that because it's not. I, that's why I brought a specialist, and that's he said it. Please make sure that you don't use Gmail for for or all any other 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 public email um, systems because remember those ones are free. Anybody can use it. If it's a URL, there's some privacy protection, all kinds of stuff put under that. So please just spend a little more. Because remember, for your business to thrive, you, your business has to be secured. Your documents have to be secured. You don't want to be go, going back and forth, going to the um, going to the court system, going to the court system, calling, spending time. Why is this? Why is this there? Why? Why is? Why am I seeing my information everywhere? All right. So thank you so much, my husband. That is Mr. David Adesunya. You know, also Pastor David Adesunya. You know, thank you so much for what you are sharing sharing with us. And um, you know, as I as I said, he's a specialist. He's a IT security specialist. He's very good at what he does, and he has spent a lot. He just decided to come and you know speak to everybody listening here. That please, really, really take your time to step back and listen to this and and protect your information and your client's information you don't want your client's information to get out there too right all right so thank, thank you, you so much for coming and um you know um bye for now thank and, you for um, me. thank you okay no bye. problem bye mm -hmm. and so um that is the end of our um podcast for today um i would um um this edition this podcast edition today um i will with you next time. I hope you got something today. Have a good one. Bye for now. Thanks for having me. Remember to join my live podcast on Tuesdays, 6 to 6.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. Visit my website, drineadesnia.com for details. Till next time, bye for now.